welcome guys to this new video for this tutorial and this time we're going to focus everything outside of python to see all the interaction and today we will be running manually um, how the microcontroller will be running and we see the interaction that we are going to prepare within inside this microcontroller and how we can visualize the data just to be sure that our program works fine if you would like to learn then how the microcontroller should communicate with Python and the basic of the communication protocol. This is the right video. Hey everybody, welcome to this new video where we are continuing the tutorial for the Python communication with the microcontroller. So this time we are going to work on the interfacing logic and the MCU program, the microcontroller program. So within the tutorial, this video is number three, and we are not really focusing on Python. This is not Python at all, but understanding what's going on outside of Python. Because for the next step, video four and five, and until the end, we are going to focus on Python. But it's very important that we understand how things go outside of Python so we can build our code accordingly. So as usual, the code that I will be sharing this time and there, that will be the code embedded in the STM32F1 will be on GitHub, so you can get it as you want. And also the language we are going to use is C. The program is KL version 5. I will be using also HTAM for the serial communication. We will have a manual example to see how to run the uh, interfacing even manually. And finally, even this is for intermediate because some code is uh, available. But if you are really new to serial communication, I will go a little bit in details and explain how the communication works between a microcontroller and the computer, especially for Python. Okay, so the first uh, for the hardware, I'm be using the STM32F1 because we do have a great tutorial uh, going and we have been building from scratch the UART communication, the uh, um, analog to digital converter um, sensing. So everything we, we need here has been built from scratch. We will need also FDTI because to interface with the computer, we will need uh, this part. And finally, we will uh, add also four potentiometer. And this is to make the example and to see how we can can play with four signal at the same time. Okay, so the tutorial at the first we we will start talking about how basic the, the, the basic communication between a PC and microcontroller, really connection 101. And after that, we will discuss a little bit the communication protocol. Then we will go inside the code that will be managing this protocol inside the STM32. And finally, so there is an STM32 message constructor. This is a program I made to, to show how we can build the, the, um, the message that we are going to send to support the protocol for the communication. At the end, we will have a manual example to see how we can run the program at the um, STM32F1 manually, and we can see the result. Good. So let's go and start with a 101 and understanding the UART communication. So let's say we do have an Arduino, and uh, just for, for the notice, the Arduino do have the FTDI integrated directly, so the, there is no need to had to add an extra FTTI. So Arduino will be sending a message to the program or to the Python program if it's connected, of course, with a USB. And after that, one of the things we need or we must decode this program, and we will see it in the previous, in the next videos of Python that we will do. And Python will use some logic, will get this data and have to send, but it has to encode it before. That's extremely important, else Arduino will not be able to read the characters or the, the array of characters that it will receive correctly or properly. Then the program can also interact at the same time with an STM32F1, the blue pill um, board that we do have here. But unfortunately, we need to add the FTDI so we can establish the right communication with the microcontroller. I put of that Arduino because Arduino have already, if you use the Arduino platform, you will be using C++ and C, where the STM32F1 we are using, Kel, we are using only the C library. And the exchange of data between both, I will call it a UART message. And this is now, after looking at this, this is the next step. We are going to take a look on this communication protocol. 
and based on the UART message. So the UART message is based, it's an array of chars. And how we are going to construct this kind of message? So first of all, we do we will be using the dash. And why the dash? So we can easily identify the message in between of them. So it's a kind of separator. And we will put some code inside that the microcontroller or Python will understand. And at the end of both messages, we must add a terminator, which is a, this, this the picture of the slash n is a new line from a character perspective or char perspective. And we will be exchanging, exchanging messages in both Arduino micro or STM and Python each time adding a new line. And this is extremely important. So both microcontroller and the system will understand that the message has ended. Okay, so let's go then and see the protocol. It will be really simple, but we have to respect it quite carefully. First of all, the PC will send this message. It will be a dash and then another dash. So this is a hashtag and then a question hashtag and a new line to the microcontroller. The reply here, so the microcontroller, what we'll be doing, if there is a stream of data running, it will stop it. And then there will be a reply and it will be providing the number of channels, how many channels I'm sensing or how many channel of data I'll be sending to the um, Python. Okay, then the next step will be, so the Python we would like to start the streaming, it will send hashtag A, hashtag slash N. So for this one, the microcontroller will understand, okay, A, I put it A because it's for ADC, just a, but we, you can choose whatever the letter as far as you're consistent with your protocol and program. So what we'll do, it will start streaming data and ascending message with N segment because it will be separated messages like this. So it will be a hashtag D for data. So uh, when Python will start reading and when it will be reading D, it will understand that the rest of the message have a certain special structure. But also it will be adding the number. It's not sum. It's a sum with a U, M, not a sum. <laughs> Sorry for my English. It will be sum of the charts. So in here, in general, it would be like this. So D and then data one, data two, until data N, the number of channel I'm sending. And the K here, the K is the sum or the total of how many charts are from D1 to DN, excluding the hashtag one. We will see it later on in the program, but this is a very important step to verify at the end of Python if the message that I'm receiving is correct. Okay, so after that, so we finish the streaming, what we will do, we send the hashtag S for stop, hashtag new line, and then the microcontroller will stop the streaming and that's all. It, as you could see, it's a very simple, but we need to be very careful in constructing this kind of communication. Okay, so now that we do have a good idea, let's take a look on the program inside the STM32 F1. So this is the program installed in the STM32 F1 and let's take a quick look on the different parts of this program. So what we are going to take at the first place is the ADC um, variable that we are going to use to generate or to get the data inside the microcontroller. So here we put the ADC channels. So this is the channels I would like to sample. And just for your knowledge here, this is the port and the, the pin number. And here is the mapping of the channels. So you don't need to understand which channels you would, to, you would like to, to map. You just have to put the pin number, which is, makes your job much easier. And then you do have the analog read uh, array. And this is an array of integer because we will be storing the value read at the microcontroller there. Finally, this is a channels equal four, means I will say to my program, but I, will, I would like to read four channels. After that, so let me close this one. We're preparing for our UART communication. So to understand this UART like carefully, you can go to the tutorial. Uh, I'm providing the link in the description, but also here you do have the details of what you would like to modify. But what I'm saying here, as you can see for this, 
um, slash n is the terminator that I'm putting for my program. So when I see the slash n or the new line means my message has ended. Okay. And then finally, stream. There is a char called stream equals zero, and this is when it will equal one. The program will be streaming. If not, the, pro the microcontroller will stop streaming. So here we start our program, and this is the um, int and the main program. So we always enable the sysdict. This is the one that will control the time for all the other uh, functions. And after that, I have a uart init, and we're putting the uart number two. And my board rate, so I put it each time a board rate. The board rate is the 115,200. Also, before going to the while loop, I'll be using interrupt. So it depends on how how much knowledge you do have about the microcontroller and how much you would like to be fancy on this one. But why I'm using interrupt, I don't want to disrupt the internal program. So what I will be doing here is my program, as soon as I get a new char coming, I will stock, be stuck in it in a certain, in a, in actually within this variable here, the UART2 message, which have the capacity of 100 char. And when the interrupt, it will keep reading the data. When it will detect there is a slash n, it will put, the, we do have another variable, this one, the UR, UR message2 here, and if it's Connect, find that this is not, and uh, this is manager, which is this one. So if the here, this one is becoming equal to one, means that my interrupt has detected the slash n. And then I can go inside my program. So first of all, when I just go inside, the first thing to do, and this is really saving a lot of energy and time from the microcontroller and make him focus on other activities. So when you are two here, as soon as enters, it go message equals zero. So there is no time wasted. And this is really taking two or three cycles. So it's almost immediate and you don't have confusion inside the microcontroller within the data itself. So after that, it will start checking the number of characters. So if it's a much longer message, it will avoid going inside. After that, what it will be doing will be checking. Am I receiving the question mark? If I have a question mark, I will be make a sync. Sync is sending the message as we have seen, including how many channels. So I will be sending the number of channels and the Python will understand how many channels we have to prepare for that. And putting stream equal zero, stream equal zero, this is what we will see here, means we will stop the streaming. And we check if inside the message, the char number one is equal to A, then we stream equal one and we start the streaming. So here the stream will start. And if it's equal S, stream is equal zero. Simple. Okay, so this is the first if, and then we close this to if, and after that immediately, and this is extremely important, we have to empty the message that we got through the interrupt. It's extremely important to empty this message. It doesn't take a lot of cycles to clean this message, so it's extremely important to do that. Then finally, if my stream is okay, what I will be doing, I will be reading the data from the analog. So here I have, I'll be using ADC1 in this example, and then I will be use the channels. So this is here, the, what we have checked here, channels is four. So this will loop through the four and I will be checking the ADC channels and putting the data in the analog read array. After that, I will create the message and will be sending it using the UART here. This is the UART2 that we enabled. And after that, the channels that we do here, we will be putting this channels, where is it? The number of channels that we are um, going to use. And it's very important to use this one. We will see it in the next section. And finally, here, this is the analog read or the data that we have inside the microcontroller that we would like to send. Okay. So here we are good, and we have an idea how the program inside the microcontroller will be working. So now what we are going to do is going and check a little bit how this message is constructed. So 
in the previous part, we have been taking a look to this a small function make message check and this one. And so let's quickly go to the library and understand how this message is constructed. So we start here by putting a few stuff. So the whip is the work in process message that we are going to use. And the message here, this is what we are going to send. It has 100 char. I put it this one because I don't think we will have more than that. And it starts with a hashtag D. And after that, we do have the message len, which is equal zero. So now, for the I equals zero and ILS and channels, because we are going to go through all the channels of the ADC data to have, what we need to do is inserting the data. And this is a function that I will explain and a whip. So what is it? So here, what we are going to do, so the data is an int. This one, this data is an int that is inputted and these are the value of the channel. So, and the whip, it will be converted to a whip. It will be converted to a string, but it will be a char. So we are going to convert this to a char, but not only that. So as you can see here, message length. So you take a look on this one. So this one, what the first thing to do is to take the number we get and to convert it here to, to a char, to put all the thing in a char. And after that, we are going to take this one, count the number of um, char that we have within that string, and we put equal to count. And after that, we clean the whip. We remove everything. But then we add the, uh, the hashtag. So this is our complete message. And after that, finally, we concatenate this one, the whip, with a number of whips. So this is the one that we have been constructing one by one. But after that, so we added hashtag, and after that we just put the number and we empty the 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 the, the string. So what I'm saying here, and which is very important, so if you do have an array, even within in um in a function uh, somewhere in the library, make sure to clean all the time those uh, arrays. The, some dummy data can stay inside it and later on you'll have trouble within your program. And after that, we return count, which is the number of char that you do have within your um, array. Okay, so here we keep counting how many characters we do have for each, um, for each part of the data and including here. So after that, when we finish, so each time we will put this whip inside the final message. So at the end, we have a final one insert data message whip for the final whip here. And finally, what we can do is concatenate a string by message and whip. So this is the message len. So what we need to do is to put the message len in inside as a final one. And finally, we close our message with the hashtag slash n. And this is how we close our message. So we ready to read it and we send the message using the UART uh, port that we would like to select. Finally, we clean the whip again and we clean my message. Be careful to always, even when you put your uh, functions or you put your program in a function and um, you do have some initialization, be really careful, always clean it at the end, just in case. Okay. That's all said. We can now see a live example, a manual example of how this will interact with our microcontroller. Okay, finally here we, we are at the final step and I quite advise you if you are working in a different um, microcontroller and you'd like to test, it's very good that you make some testing manually to see how your program is interacting. So I have uploaded the program that I have shared with you previously in this microcontroller. So this is our STM32. To F1, and this is connected to the uh, UART communication for the API, and we do have here our four potentiometer. Okay, so first of all, let's start, and I selected the board, the um, 115,200, and let's connect. Okay, so we are connected now, and let's start, first of all, to send some message, but before that, just to, to be sure, when you send, 
LF, or this is for the new line, it would send plus a slash n. So let's try to send a hashtag and then the question mark, and after that, another hashtag. If we send like this, you can see what we receive. Unfortunately, I cannot really um, make a zoom, but we receive um, a, um, a hashtag, um, exclamation point, and then four, and then something strange. Let's send again to be sure. So now it's, it's correct. So the first one we had an issue, and after that it's a correct one. So sometimes that's very important, and we will see it later in a Python program. We need to put some verification, and that's why we added the message constructor, because sometimes the data is corrupted, and we, we need to be careful to accept only the clear message. And also you see, we do have here the new line, but we don't have a new line. So to do this with an H term, we just go here and LF, so you can see it. So let me send again, and the program is working perfectly. So let's try to ask to get the data. So as we said, it was so instead of hashtag um, is a question point, we would put here an A, and we start. And you can see what we do have here. So let me try to stop the scrolling to give you an idea of the method. So first of all, we do have a D for the data, then the value of the first channel, value of the second channel, value of the third channel, the value of the fourth channel. After that, we do have a number 16 here. So 16 here, you have four charts, four charts, four charts, and four charts in 16. Let's play a little bit and put everything to a lower, to exactly to zero with a potentiometer and see how many um, number we'll have here. So let's go here and put this one to zero, this one to zero, this one to zero, and this one to zero. And you could see, let me stop the scrolling for a moment, and you can see when we start changing the number, we put this one to zero, it, become, it became 13 here. So we do have 12 plus 1, it's 13. And after that, when we become 2 for these two one zeros, it become 10. And the transition, I guess I didn't really spend a lot of time, but we had a small transition here when it went to 700. And until we get to the end where we do have four zeros. Now let's go back to the scrolling. And instead of sending A, let's send S to see what's going on. And you can see the microcontroller stopped sending the data as we expected. So you can see with this really simple command, a very short messages to avoid any error or mistake, we could have a control with the microcontroller and get the data as we need. Hope you enjoyed this video, and now we can go back again to a Python and start building our program to make the communication based on this protocol. Thank you, and see you for the next video.